Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green ramp deck titled Swarm Sculptor, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a landfall ramp deck featuring a Phyleth or Phyleth, just gonna call him Phil from now on, a World Sculptor, the 6 mana 5 5 legendary creature elemental, that when he enters a battlefield makes an 0 1 green plant creature token for each basic land card we control, and then landfall lets us put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target plant we control, so Phil adds a ton of power and toughness to the board when he enters a battlefield, and then the other main win condition in the deck is Skewed Swarm, a 3 mana 1 1 insect, that with landfall makes a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token, but if we control 6 or more lands we get to make a token that's a copy of Skewed Swarm instead, which can very quickly get out of hand. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we do want a lot of ramp to get fill in play quickly, so we've got our full playset of Lotus Cobra, making 1 mana of any color with landfall, as well as Wolf Willow Haven, a 2 mana enchantment aura that can enchant one of our lands to then produce additional green mana. Then at 3 mana we also have the full playset of Heraldic Banner, which is quite synergistic in the deck. We can name green, and then all our green creatures will get plus 1 plus 0, including the tokens from Scoot Swarm, as well as the plant tokens from Phil. Then we also have two copies of Roiling Regrowth, an instant that lets us sacrifice a land, and then we get to search our library for up to two basic land cards to put on the battlefield tapped. So this is an instant speed way for us to enable landfall, which is great in combination with our Scoot Swarm, and especially with Phil, as we potentially get to put additional plus one counters on our plant tokens at instant speed after maybe attacking with them after the opponent already declared blockers. Then we've got our full playset of Cultivate to help us keep hitting our land drops and ramp. And then we also have the full playset of Bone Crusher Giant. This is the main interaction in the deck early on, dealing 2 damage to any targets, and then we can play 4-3 creature afterwards. So this shines against opposing aggro decks. And then at 4 mana we've got our full playset of Vastwood Surge, which can help us search up 2 basic lands, but we can also kick it later in the game for 8 mana total, and then put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each creature we control, which is also incredibly synergistic if we manage to make some tokens with a Skew Swarm, or some plant tokens with Phil. And then finally we also have two copies of Morog, Fury of Akum, the 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary Minotaur warrior at Mythic, saying each creature we control gets plus 1 plus 0 for each time it has attacked at this turn, and Landfall says if it's our main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase, and at the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures we control. Now Morag is worded a little awkwardly, if we want to take full advantage of Morag, we want to make sure to play our additional lands after attacking for the first time, so we get that untap trigger so our creatures can attack once again, and then we also need to play any fetch lands or additional search effects after that original combat phase, since we won't get a chance to do so otherwise. And then taking a look at the mana base, we do want a ton of basic lands, since we have all these search effects between Cultivate, Regrowth, Fastwood Surge, and then of course our Fetch lands, Fabled Passage also wants to search up basic lands, and can potentially enable landfall twice in one turn. So that's why we have 8 basic forests and 6 basic mountains, as well as 2 evolving wilds as initial fetch land to potentially enable landfall twice. And of course Phil also wants us to have plenty of basic lands to make those plant tokens, which is why we only have 2 copies of Turn Timber symbiosis and two copies of shatter skull smashing which would typically be great in a deck like this which can generate a ton of mana but we just want the higher basic land count and then symbiosis can every now and then help us find a creature as well as smashing which can take out opposing creatures or planeswalkers so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw this hand seems okay i am lacking a finisher a skewed swarm or a fill, but we do have all the ramp we need early on. Opponent on the red-black. So, don't really want to play Lotus Cobra when they can so easily kill it, so let's just play Haven. Although then again... Yeah, let's just play Haven. It's a bit more difficult for the opponent to interact with. And then next turn we can potentially double spell. There's your opponent on the red-black mid-range deck. So I can play double Lotus Cobra here if I want to. Seems reasonable. Or I can just cultivate. And that will work too. 
Yeah, let's just play Cobra. I assume one of them is gonna get killed, at least. Alright, thirst on one of them. And the other one's gonna get killed too. Alright, there's Phil. So, probably wanna save Fast Food Surge, which we can kick. And then we'll just play our mountain out. Next turn we can play Phil and Fabled Passage. And then we'll still have Fast Food Surge to play Kicked afterwards, potentially. Yeah, I guess there's no reason to not play Evolving Wilds this turn. And then if I'm worried about instant speed removal on Phil, like a Hagra Mauling, for instance, I might want to fetch now, which seems reasonable. And then we'll spread out the uh, plus one counters a little bit. Timmered calls the dead. Okay. Opponent hoping to find some escape creatures. No Croxels in the graveyard just yet. They are playing the Acrone War, so that's potentially a scary card. And then... Opponent's attacking. I could just take six. And then we can play Fetch Lanes. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, Phil just takes over the game very easily if he goes unanswered. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. What do we think of this hand? Uh, it's a little bit land light, but we do have ramp with Haven, Banner, Surge. So I'll keep. And then we're just a uh, skewed swarm or fill away from plenty of tokens. Ooh, Lotus Cobra could also be nice, but for now I think I prefer Haven to ensure that we have three mana. Opponent mono green so far. So I could go Haven into Cobra. Kind of like that idea. And then next turn we can potentially Vastwood Surge, enable Landfall twice. Ooh, Skewed Swarm. So now I'm into the idea of holding the Surge until after we play Swarm. So I have four mana here. I can play Banner, still have two mana left over. But that's not enough to do anything significant since I don't really want to stomp anything. Or I can just surge anyway, get two lands, enable landfall twice, and once again we don't have any use for that two mana. So, I think I just played a swarm then. Now I'm not going to get any copies from Skewed Swarm, because we still only have four lands even after casting surge. But the tokens are still useful with banner. And then we're just a land or two away from doing some powerful things with Morog. Garrick's Harbinger. Pumps Yorvo. And we'll take five. Alright, land is good. So we can play our lands. Play Surge.
And then I could stomp, but don't see a reason to. And then if we draw lands, they're great with Morag and Scute Swarm. If we draw spells, presumably they can find lands or they're gonna be useful somewhere else. Ooh, Gem Racer, that's too bad. It's gonna kill my banner. Could have also killed my Wolf of Haven, but of course banner is a bit more impactful. So do I want to trade for the Harbinger with three tokens? If I draw a lance, I could play Morag and then... Of course, all those tokens with Morag can represent a ton of damage, so I kind of like the idea of just taking it. And then especially if we draw a fetch land, that would be great. Oh, there's a fetch land. So we'll play Morag. And then I guess what we can do is Fabled Passage just to be able to stomp the Serpents. Are we gonna have lethal points at 20? So I want to attack with everyone. And then fetch. Get that on tap trigger. Attack again. And there we go. Sweet. So yeah, even though we were pretty far behind there after that gem racer, Morag showing up big here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a lures of the Dream Den deck, so it could be blue-black rogues. This hand's fine. Uh, we'll need to maybe draw an extra land or two, but we've got all the cards we need. And uh, there's a turn one rune crab. All right, so let's uh, just play a basic. Try and hold Fable Passage until after Cobra. And yeah, double rune crab start. It's gonna mill us pretty quickly. If I had Evolving Wilds in my opening hand, I probably would have played a turn one just to get the tap land out of the way. Might see a Cling to Dust or a... Yep, Cling to Dust. The other possibility with one black mana at instant speed, of course, is the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Triple Rune Crab, wow. And a Fabled Passage, so that's gonna mill us for 18. So my opponent might just be on the mill plan instead of the... Rogue B-Town plans this game. And they could also just mill all my basic lanes so I don't have anything to fetch up, which would be unfortunate. And a Blood Chief's Thirst. Wow, opponent with a perfect draw here. And yeah, I can not really do anything this turn. I guess I'll fetch before they mill all my basics. I've got a couple left. At least her opponent's not doing much. No reason to stomp their face. And then I want to hold Skew Swarm until we can make a copy. So for now, probably just cultivate. Could also Haven into cultivate, but if cultivate resolves, I can just play the basic we search up. And then maybe hold Fable Passage for later. Uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer shows up. So we're down to 14 cards, 11 cards. And into the story to draw 4, so they're definitely gonna have more lands next turn, maybe even a Fabled Passage to just mill me out. So what's it gonna be? I can uh, finally make a copy of Skewed Swarm. It's probably the plan here. The 
problem here is I might not have any basics left. Alright, we've got three left, so we can still enable landfall a few times. And I guess I'll just regrowth. And then Symbiosis at least can be another land. Of course, by fetching these lands, we also reduce the number of cards in our deck. So I'm counting on my opponent not having any lands, which is unlikely, but it's probably our best bet at this point. And they do have the lands, so they mill us out. Oh well. Not much you can do about a triple rune cramp start. Maybe if they didn't have the thirst to kill the Cobra, we still managed to get all these cards in play fast enough, but I doubt it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Could use a few more search effects, so hopefully we draw into some ramp. And then I'll probably have to use my Evolving Wilds to get a mountain. And then hold on to the Fabled Passage for later. And then Cobra can provide a ton of mana. Can also play Fabled Passage and then just play a 4-3 Giant if we want to. Although Innkeeper, I'm pretty happy to stomp. Although there's a Vasud Surge as well, so... I guess what we can do is Fabled Passage... Fetch to make one more mana. And then... With the two additional landfall triggers, we can still stomp. And then now we'll have... The additional lands to potentially make copies of the Skewed Swarm instead. So yeah, Lotus Cobra is a very powerful card. So if we draw lands, those are great. If we draw any ramp spells, those would be good too. So we're not in a bad spot. Wonder Mare, Sir opponent on a green-white adventure deck. And a Fabled Passage is quite a draw as well, so can play the Swarm, play Fable Passage, make a mana, and then play Swarm before fetching. And then we'll just stomp our opponent's face, I think. So now we get the Skewed Swarm tokens going, which can just start going wide and attacking. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. They may have been playing a starter deck, but uh, yeah, with this start you can beat some tier 1 decks as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand as long as we can find a third land. Turn 1, I'm just gonna fetch a mountain and get the tap land out of the way, and then double cobra can generate a ton of mana as long as we can cast our cultivates and regrowths. Opponent on blue-white. Surge. Alright, so our next draw step is going to be very important. Glass Casket exiles cobra. We do have a backup. And we did find a land. Okay, so... Got a couple options. I'm kind of liking just Cultivate here. Make sure we keep hitting our land drops. And then... Next turn I can play Cobra and still play something else. And a Maze Mind Tomb. Okay. So that can draw them some cards. Get to go Cobra. And then play Regrowth. Or I could just play Vastwood Surge here. So let's think for a second if I 
regrowth. I will still have three mana afterwards, which is not enough to do anything. Fast switch search I might want to hold since we can maybe play it kicked after making the plant tokens. So I think I do regrowth here. And I guess I can even do it in the opponent's turn since we don't need the mana right away. Apparition gonna try and XL Cobra. Then we can play Phil. And I'm probably just playing the Smashing to enable Landfall afterwards. And hope they don't have a Shatter the Sky. And then if we draw land, we can play Kick to Vast with Surge. But even an unkicked one still adds 8 power to the board. Alright, Birth. That's fine. And a second birth. So we can do some damage here. Ooh, Heraldic Banner. Awesome draw as well. So Banner names green. And then we'll play Surge. And we'll spread out the counters a little bit. So yeah, opponent's chum blocking. And then still taking... Quite a beating, so... Yeah, they pretty much need to shatter the sky, otherwise they're dead. If they do have shatter, it's gonna be kinda tough for us, cause... We don't have another threat in hand. But we could potentially top deck a Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, there's a Shatter. Unfortunately, they might have had it in hand and just wanted to wait an extra turn, which was risky on their part, but it's maybe paid off here. Sadly, don't draw Bone Crusher Giant, so we're not doing much, and next turn they get to gain a bunch of life. Tome can also eventually gain four. So now we're just in top deck mode. Can thin out the deck a little bit but also want to keep some lands in hand for landfall. So I'll just search up one forest here, I think. And then pass. So another fill is probably our best draw. Scute Swarm could also do it. And we gotta hope they don't have any counter spells in hand. Elspeth conquers death to get rid of my banner. Ooh, Skeet Swarm, nice. So I can play the Swarm. Play a land. And then we'll just play this Kicked and then hope they don't have another Shatter.
but it still boils down to whether or not they have another Shatter, which they do. That's unlucky. So we're out of basic lands in the deck now. They kept both cards on top. Can't exile Morog. And another Conqueror's Death. There's Phil. Now the problem with Phil is that we don't have a land to follow up with, but we will still get all the tokens. So if we draw a banner afterwards, for instance, or another Vastwood Surge, we don't get the landfall trigger, but we still get all the plus one counters. So it's probably still worth it here. 13 tokens, so hoping to draw banner or Vastwood Surge now. I guess a second Morag could also be okay, since it just gives all our attacking tokens one additional power. Well, a third Shatter the Sky, not much you can do about that one. Fable Passage will hold, no reason to play Bone Crusher since it'll get back Apparition next turn to exile it. I mean, we could run our opponent out of Shatter Disguise, at which point we can maybe take over the game. Not sure if they're playing Ugin, the Spirit Dragon as well. Dream Trawler, alright, so that's our win condition. Scute Swarm. Maybe our opponent doesn't know that we don't have any basics left. And then I guess we'll just stomp their face and play giant. So the skewed swarms are not going to get there by themselves. Might see more Skyclave Apparitions. Glass Casket can exile one of them. And another Apparition. I think I'm actually fine with this exchange since... Interesting, they're getting rid of the Giants instead of the token. Yeah, the Skid Swarm's not gonna get there by itself. So I'm kind of happy that they're running out Apparition, which maybe could have gotten rid of another Heraldic Banner, which is what we need in combination with another fill to make a bunch of tokens. So Dream Trawler's gonna attack. Taking nine. I guess because I had Fabled Passage, they didn't bother getting rid of the Swarm. Lotus Cobra is just a 2-1 here, so I think this game's over. Yeah, Shadow of the Sky is a good card against this, so... That's one we need to try and dodge, and we didn't do a very good job this game. Another Conqueror's Death. Can get rid of the token, does have Converted Mana cost 3 despite being a token. And yeah, as it turns out, we're out of basics. So this game also highlights the importance of having a lot of basic lands to keep enabling landfall even later. 
So I think we're out of outs at this point. Even if we draw another fill, the Dream Trawler is just going to fly over and kill us. There's Morag instead. Attack for four, and then... Even if we managed to get a second attack step here, we would have been a little bit short. Ah, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play and yeah, don't hate this hand. The one downside of Haven is that it doesn't count towards having a certain number of lands in play for Scute Swarm, but it does help us ramp on turn two and it's not vulnerable to removal spells unlike a Lotus Cobra. And then probably want to wait with playing the swarm until we can make a copy or at least a 1-1 one -one token. So Brushfire Elemental, yeah I could Scute Swarm play land Probably want to hold regrowth until after we play the swarm. So that seems fine here. And the 1 1 tokens are still quite valuable once we play Heraldic Banner. Brush fire with a Fable Passage and even a Gallia, so opponent with a very aggressive Gruul deck here. Well, I guess I'll take seven. Ooh, Phil. That changes our play here, I think. So I've got four mana in play, can make it five. So I could go Banner into Regrowth. And that sets up Phil for next turn. Yeah, kind of like that. Could also hold the regrowth technically, since we already have six mana for fill. But it seems better than just playing another swarm here, so might as well do it now. And then swarm can attack. Do I attack with the token? Sure. Gotta watch out for, like, Fabled Passage plus Ember Cleave, I guess, could maybe kill me. They would have a 6-6 Double Striking Trampling Brush Fire. Alright, just a regular land and a Questing Beast. Questing Beast does line up pretty well against my tokens, since we can't easily block it. And we'll trade for Galia. And then... Uh, yeah, can block the brush fire, so take seven. Ooh, Fable Passage was an awesome draw. So play Phil. Get to make a Skeet Swarm token. Now I'm probably still dead to an Amber Cleave on Questing Beasts but we can probably beat anything else. Great. 
great hand, that's fine. Alright, so I feel like uh, we've got this one. Opponent gains two. Still attacking with the Brushfire Elemental, which I can just block and then use Fabled Passage to grow one of my tokens. Or I can just trade. I guess I'll fetch now. And a stomp from Bone Crusher could also come in handy. So am I attacking with everyone? They block Phil. They still seem pretty dead. So yeah, let's get in there. Alright, sweet. So managed to beat a red-green Gruel Agro deck. Not sure if they were playing an adventure version, but it is quite likely. So yeah, as long as we can dodge Embercleave, it is a very winnable matchup as well. So we got to see a nice variety of matchups here with our red-green Swarm Sculptor deck. Lost some close games where our opponents got some nice draws. Not much we could do there, but the deck's power level is undoubtedly quite high if it gets to do its thing, and Phil is no joke. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.